what we thought we would do is just give a flavor of what we're teaching the community so that if you can help us spread this message, we can help kids not be victims and also make sure these kids aren't charged with some of the offenses. Because a lot of times they find out too late that they can be charged by their behavior on the internet. I'm just gonna go through this um, and give you a little idea of what we are informing our community. Obviously, they can make excellent uh, choices with social media, but they can also do bad choices. If I could say one thing to parents and kids, it would be this. Understand that a predator on the internet is never gonna identify who they are or what they want. <coughs> I was speaking with a mother of a little boy and he had found some type of chat room that she didn't even know existed on a child type site and is telling her about this person talking to them. I had a mom of a little girl tell me that she was on a Barbie site and the little girl says, hey mom, I'm talking to someone. Why do they wanna know what I'm wearing? We have to understand that predators out there go where the children are. And so I think if parents know that's out there, they can better protect their children. We give tips. It is amazing to me, you guys, that kids, students, think that they are popular by how many followers they have on their Snapchat or Instagram. And we go, when I'm talking to the kids, I'll say, all right, how many of you think that someone who has a thousand friends is more popular than someone who has 30 that actually know them? To them, those numbers mean something. And so what that means is they will act in a dangerous manner to get those likes and followers. They'll keep their accounts open. And so here we've got some slides making sure students and parents know that you must keep this information private. The number one thing I see, and you guys, with my cases that go to trial, I look at a lot of phone data. This is the number one thing. This is what a lot of kids will um, put as their screen name. Ashley CHS19. You guys, what do you think that says? That person, Concord High School class of 2019. What does that reveal to a stranger? How old you are? They'll do that with their middle school, their high school. We tell them, don't, don't put <coughs> your school name. Don't put your date of graduation. It just lets predators out there know, you know who you are and what age. This one, I've had so many cases, and I tell the kids, this isn't New York, this isn't California, it's here in Concord where they are meeting someone online, the person is pretending to be their own age. And then when they go and meet the person, it's, it's an adult. And often the kids are so shocked, things happen before they can get away. And so when I'm going to the schools and I've got the school's permission, I'm telling the kids about this because we've got to protect them. They've got to know that this is a risk. Um, I think it's so important that kids understand that they can exit a conversation. Um, we talk about photos and we'll talk a little bit more about that locking down your social media I asked the kids before you came to this school event how many of you locked your front door and most of them raised their hands well you got to do the same with your social media you got to lock it the last piece I tell them is with a lot of my offenders they will use information that the kids are posting to gain trust with the kids it's often sad you'll have a student say, I just failed that math test again, or my mom doesn't understand, or I just broke up with so-and-so. Well, then the offenders use that information to start talking with the kid. And you can imagine it's pretty effective. So we talk with parents, make sure your child is not broadcasting that for the strangers of the world. And then of course, we're very big on reporting any bullying message. When I go and talk to schools, there hasn't been a time yet when I talk about bullying that I haven't had some student come up to me and say, what do you do if you're being bullied? It's happening, and, and this is why I think parents, the more they're involved, the more we can stop this. I think looking around at the table, maybe except for maybe Laura, because she looks very young, but for me and the rest of us, when we were in school, when we went home, the day ended. If there were mean kids, they really couldn't get to us because we were home. But for the younger generation, they have that phone. And the bullying continues. And I think that's what we're working with our kids. I won't go through it here, but with the parents, I showed them some quick ways that they can lock down. This is Snapchat, and I just show some screens. How you can make it safer with just a couple of checks. 
In the contact me section, I tell the parents, make sure your child says my friends and not everyone. In the my story, showing their contacts and what they're uh, showing, what they're publishing, make sure it's limited to my friends. But this one I wanted to really focus on because you guys, it's scary what's out there. As a prosecutor, this scares me. This is a Snapchat app. And a couple years ago, they changed it where it allows for geo-tracking. That means if your child has Snapchat and doesn't have this locked down, then anyone else who has Snapchat will know exactly where your kid is. But there's a way you can stop it. It's this section of Snapchat, it's called My Location, and there's a button that's called Ghost Mode. All you need to do is make sure it's enabled. I explained to the parents, you want your child to be a ghost to the rest of the community. And so just that one thing will stop the GPS tracking. But that's scary, that anybody could know where our kids are. So those are some of the things that we talk about. We ask parents to make sure their children aren't victims. But I'm also having a number of students come before us who have been charged. And these charges we know will ultimately affect their ability to get into college, have jobs, et cetera. So we're going out there and we're getting the message out there, don't do these things. Cyber stalking is one of the things I'm seeing our kids do. I put in here the slides of what the statute is. Ultimately, it's using some type of electronic to threaten or harass another student or maybe administrator or teacher. <coughs> kids don't know that it is a crime to do it. And so we're out there telling them, be careful before you push send. Um, we talk about that not only making the message, but sending the message to others can be a crime. And so we provide to our parents and students, what do you do if you get one of these messages? Don't send it. Delete it. And speak with a trusted adult or school resource officer. This one I'll just briefly touch on. We're having an epidemic of this. We are having um, where these explicit photographs are being shared with others in the school. Um, as I explained to the parents, this is normally what happens. You'll have a couple high schoolers get into a relationship. They, one of them might take photographs of the other doing some things, and then they're shocked when the relationship ends after two weeks. And one of the parties decides, huh, I'm going to distribute all these photographs to the rest of the school. It's happening all over the state. It's happening all over the country. We've had in some states some of the victims of that have been so um, embarrassed that they've taken their own lives. That's not going to happen here. So we tell the students out there, don't take the photos and definitely don't send them. Because what they don't understand is the consequences under the law is huge. Because it's a felony to uh, engage in those type of photographs. It's a felony to send those type of photographs because it's considered child pornography. If the child is under the age of 18, it's in some type of sexual act, even if they are willingly participating, it's child pornography. Now, we don't want to be prosecuting students for child pornography. I've got enough adult offenders for that. But I think we can't have students taking their own lives and going through uh, those embarrassing and humiliating circumstances. Finally, I'll say this, with the Child Protective Team, with the DA's office, we want to work hard because we want to see students in school and activities and graduation. I do not want to see them in my courtroom, either as victims or as offenders. 